Hello everyone and welcome to another beer review. Now the beer we're reviewing today wasn't actually the beer I was planning to do because I went looking for the beer that uh, my viewer had mentioned about and I couldn't find it. Now the first time I went looking for it was probably understandable because I was looking in the wrong shop because I thought it came from Little but the beer I was looking for actually came from Ali and then I was looking in Little and I couldn't find it. So I went back to the drawing board and I realised that's not my mistake. I was looking in the wrong bloody shop. So I looked to my local Aldi and still couldn't bloody find it. So I wasn't going out empty handed a second time. So I decided to buy something else. Now, it caught my eye because this beer, people have reviewed it in the past and said it was quite good. And then I watched a review maybe about a year, year and a half ago. And people said it actually changed and Aldi and the brewer had mucked about with it and the product wasn't so great anymore. But I didn't know what it tastes like before and I don't know what it tastes like now. So I'm coming in here totally open. But there is some things that... I wouldn't say worry me, but there's maybe a little bit of alarm bells ringing. And uh, I'll tell you about that in a minute. But we're actually doing Rheinbacker Pilsner. Now, this is Rheinbacker Pilsner from Aldi. It's brewed in accordance with the German purity laws. So it's going to be more of a German Pilsner, of course, rather than a Czech Pilsner. So it's not going to have that kind of real bitter finish that you get with a Czech Pilsner. And it's supposed to be 4.5%. I think it did actually did that. There we go. Trying to get the light right. There you go. Right, and uh, what does it say on it? Any spew? Bills no lager, that's it. Know your limits. Specially produced for Aldi stores, blah, 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 blah. Doesn't say where it's produced, but yes, it's 4.5%. And that's really it. Now, the thing that got me going, the kind of alarm bells going, was you get it in a four pack and it's £3.22, no, £3.25. I'm doing really well today. £3.25 for a four pack, which means it's well under a pound a can. So alarm bells are kind of ringing because usually that's not a good sign. You don't get a good beer usually if it's really under a pound a can. Especially when it's a, was that 500? Yes, a 500 mil can. So there you go, 500 mil. And uh, yeah. So let's get it poured and see what it, oh God, I've just pissed it right over my bloody trousers. God. Um, it's going well today, isn't it? Right all over my bloody trousers. I can feel that in my leg. Most of she says. Um, well, right, so there you go. I'll put this down. I'm just going to go. Jesus, God. I'll be all sticky all night. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> right. So yeah, as you can see, it's kind of um, straw coloured, not light straw coloured. It's, it's a kind of a general kind of standard lager colour. Oh, getting malty sweetness, some grains, no real hops, nothing else, no citrus, nothing else, not really much of a head either. Here it reminds me of, it's got a bit of a smell of a bit. It smells a little bit between kind of like slightly still artois and uh, Maybe hence of Foster's or Cronenberg in there as well. It smells, it smells really pilsner. It does smell more kind of laggerish. And bloody flies, good. Just little shit. Anyway, why are the bloody flies? I don't know. Look at them bloody flowers, there's blooming white ball. Bloody ball fries in here. But anyway, to cut a long story short, it doesn't smell like a 
a traditional German Pilsner, it certainly doesn't smell like a, a traditional Czech Pilsner, so there you go, and again, the head's almost dissipated, there's a wee bit, you know, of uh, glazing in the glass, but let's see what it tastes like. Right. I wondered what a beer would taste like if it was a love child between Stella and Cronenberg 1664. Well, I wonder no more. Yeah, it's a, it is a bit like that. It's not really a pill, isn't it? It doesn't really have that kind of Christmas to it. It's got the graininess there a bit more, but again, you get that also with Stella and 1664. What it does have, it has that kind of slight, I'm not going to say bitter, because bitter you might think it's, you know, maybe supposed to be that slight kind of chemical sourness to it that's prevalent in both Cronenberg 1664 and also in Stella Artois. A kind of slightly chemical kind of Bitterness, I'm going to say the word bitterness, but it's not bitterness that I would say is a kind of natural bitterness, maybe coming from hops or whatever. It's more of a bitterness of, and with a slightly kind of chemical kind of nature to it. And it's one of the things I really hated in Cronenberg 1664 and I really hated in uh, Stella Artois. It's not as strong of a kind of bitterness as you would get in Stella, and especially not as strong as in 1664. But I've got to admit, um, there is kind of uh, hints of it that uh, does kind of spoil the finish. And uh, it's something I really, it's a flavour I just really do not like in uh, lagers in any way, shape or form. Well, let's break it down. You start off with a bit of multi sweetness, hint of green at the front of the mouth. You move on to the mid-tongue. The malty sweetness, it you know, dies down a wee bit, but it's still there, and you know, the grain starts to build up, builds up, builds up. Moving on to the kind of aftertaste, the malty sweetness has now dissipated completely. You're left with a kind of light greenness because it's starting to dissipate, and then you start getting this kind of uh, bitterness coming through at the end, and there's a slight chemical kind of feel to it. That really does spoil it. I mean, at the end of the day, the start of the mouth and the mid tongue, they're okay flavour profiles. I'm not going to say they're bad, but they're nothing great either. So they're very, very kind of average at best. The problem is, so is when that aftertaste kicks in and you're getting this kind of slight kind of chemical bitterness, that's just, it is very kind of Cronenberg 1664-esque. And to a certain degree, stellar esque, but it is lighter than the two. I would say, if you're going for that kind of chemical bitterness, I would probably say Cronenberg 1664's got the worst of it, then Stella, and then I would say, yes, this is kind of coming in third, and uh, yeah. It's gone completely dead. Um, yeah. It's not that great, but at £3.25, do you really expect it to be that great? I mean, it's a beer I think it's been done to kind of buy Aldi to kind of take on the likes of these mass produced beers that are sold really cheap, likes of Stella Artois, likes of Carling, Foster's, Budweiser, all these mainstream piss waters. And I think it's kind of there to kind of take it on and kind of give Aldi their own kind of uh, option to offer their uh, their regulars. So yes, um, £3.25, four pack, 500 mil can, one and a half percent. You know, it, you, you can see it's like they're trying to make a kind of a uh, mirror image. Kind of scenario, I think, well, let's take on the big boys. 
And I would say they've probably got the same kind of flavour profiles as, as quite a lot of these beers. And the problem is none of these beers are particularly nice and the flavour profiles aren't that great. But they seem to be, it seems to be quite a good copy from that point of view. And if you like that, then that's great. If you like these type of drinks and profiles, which is quite interesting. <laughs> because I was reading in a paper in the UK. I'm going to probably do this more in another video because there's quite a few things that were done. There was a, a, a YouGov poll on beers going by different age groups um, of men and women. And uh, what are the kind of more popular beers within the different age groups within the UK? And it'd be quite interesting. So I'm going to kind of go through of that and I'm going to get a couple of men and I'll do that as a little series of, well, let's look at these top beers within this kind of age group, this age group. So uh, what I would plan to do is basically get the top three of each and, and see how they compare from that point. And the, the problems are quite strange, actually, because some of them are all over the place. But anyway, that'd be quite an interesting one to do. So I will be looking into that. But what I did notice was there was about this pub. Now, this pub was selling beer for £1.70. Now, they were selling a lot of beers. At one pound seventy, the likes of Foster's. I think they were doing John Smiths. I think they were doing quite a few other beers. So they're all roughly about one pound seventy. And uh, but you, you didn't buy it at one pint at one pound seventy. What it would basically be, you get three pints for five pounds ten, which of course would equate to one pound seventy a pint. So that's how they were basically doing it. So you would basically get three pints for five pounds ten, and it's very popular. It's a pub in Blackpool. And it seems to be that people go for it, but it's all that kind of mainstream piss water. Now, people say you get a good pint here. And the amount of times I've read quotes within this article, you get a good pint here, you get a good pint in here. And it's all this mainstream piss water. So it's really quite scary that a lot of people are classing a good pint. Now, what do they class as a good pint? Now, this is what we want to try and kind of work out. What is going on in the UK that there's so many people buying this mainstream piss water, but they're classing it as a good pint? Why are they classing it as a good pint? Is it because it's got a nice frothy head? Is it because it's cheap? Is it because it, it's sold? At a, I mean, because one thing I do notice, especially within the pubs, because if you actually, uh, I've done this, I've been quite sad, I've been in there with a the thermometer. What I have noticed is a lot of your mainstream piss water is actually sold at a really, really cold temperature, really, really highly chilled, to the point is that a lot of them are round about three degrees now a normal thing this i've got this roughly about six most of the time when i'm basically using the the beer monster when i'm doing the kegs i've got them around about six seven if it's more of a kind of a, an ale then i'll maybe take it up to about eight or nine that type of thing but on average it's ranging between six and nine whereas these ones are highly chilled so they're basically you know there's plenty of carbonation in them so they've got a really good frothy head when they're poured, they're down to three degrees, and people are classing this as a good pint. And I think it's a case as though, is it to do with how it's kind of served to them, that people like this? Maybe not so much the beer. They like the price of the beer. They like the, the look of the beer because it comes all with a nice head and things like that. And uh, it's chilled within an inch of its life that you probably can't taste anything. So you could probably find that you could probably put a Stella, you know, a pint of Stella, Pint of Foster's and a pint of Cali, and you probably kind of struggle to kind of really identify the individual flavours of each beer. And to the point that I'm not going to say you really think they're all the same. No, I don't say that, but I would say there's a case as though a lot of the, the flavour profiles of these three beers would probably be quite toned down because of how cold it served that. But yeah, I just thought it was crazy. And they're selling a lot. I think it was the case as though every week they're selling over 8,000 8, pounds in this one little pub in uh, Blackpool just because of the pricing. And it's all the kind of mainstream piss water. So it just shows you there's a lot of people buying it. So we slag off the mainstream breweries and things like that. Well, the problem is we slag them off and say that the beer's crap and everything else, and it is, it's mainstream piss water, but the problem is they're making it because people are buying it. 
And that's what it comes down to. I mean, as a business for them, and they're making what people want because people are buying it. If they're making stuff that the people didn't really want, then people wouldn't be buying it. So there you go. So you can point the fingers at the big breweries to a certain degree, but you've also got to point the fingers at the punters as well because they're drinking. But again, is that bit of that kidology of how you're serving it, how you basically... You say that, um, you know, a feast for your eyes. I mean, you get a lot of this in food and... Uh, what's appetizing and what's not appetizing to the eyes and i suppose if you're basically dressing it up so it looks appetizing to the eyes and then you're chilling it so much that you're basically killing off a lot of the flavor profiles then uh, you're making it easy for people to drink it and uh, it looks nice it looks like a good pint so yeah maybe that's why they go for it for this now what would i give this out of 10. i'm going to give this a three out of 10. I can understand. I mean, it's £3.25. People are working in budgets. And yeah. I mean, but what is it? It's roughly about three ninety nine for a four pack of Fosters. It's roughly about that for the kind of Carlins. It's roughly about a pound a can. This is quite, quite a bit under a pound a can from that point of view. So, I mean, if you're looking on the basis, if you're buying an eight, pack you know two four packs so you were talking about what force is going to cost you just shy of eight quid calendar roughly about the same stella's not that far away and then you've got this which is going to cost you six pounds fifty so you're, you're, you're saving almost one pound fifty over over eight cans so it's not bad from that point of view it's got the alcohol content roughly about four and a half percent, which is what these kind of beers usually are. Although Stella has gone back up to five percent, which I will have to do a review on that. I wish they'd stop mucking about with the bloody beer because every time they basically fuck about with it, I've got to review it again because it's a very popular beer and people like to know well, has it made a difference? So I will have to review Stella Artois again because they went from five down to four point eight, then it went down to four point six, and it's down from by the way back up to point five again. Oh, and in between times they brought out an unfiltered version because, hey, they started to realise, well, our beer is really kind of crap. So we'll try and make up a slightly better version and see if people like it, which they do. So there you go. So you've got a bad version and a slightly better version on sale. Woohoo. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to give this a three. I can understand, but it's not really that good a beer. It's, it's not a particularly pleasant drink. And for the £3.25, I can understand can understand but the problem is if they brought up if they spent a little bit more if they brought it up to maybe a pound a can they could maybe have got a better beer and i i know from my business point of view i'd rather have a, a better beer at an okay price than having a quite a disappointing beer at a really cheap price that's how i look at it so my beer add the extra per four cans Bring it up to four pounds instead of three pounds twenty-five. Add the seventy-five pence and see if you can try and get a better beer. So yeah, three out of ten. Four hundred fifty mil, Rheinbacher, four point five percent from Aldi. There's a fly. Thanks for watching. Cheers, and bye for now.